Today I'm going to demonstrate how to install Ubuntu 12.04 inside of a Windows 8 Pro Hyper-V guest. I'm going to use a network installation server to accomplish this and then I'll show you a couple other settings that will need to be changed for Ubuntu 12.04 uh, to play nicely inside of Hyper-V. Even though I'm not going to cut this video, you'll see the full OS install in real time. The in total time should only be about 10 minutes, so let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the virtual machine here. I'm going to do pretty minimal hardware requirements since this is just going to be a demonstration server install. I'm going to put it on my internal network. Smaller hard drive. So for the installation media option, I'm going to do a network-based installation server. What this is going to do is it's going to create a legacy network adapter that supports Pixie booting. And then after the install is completed, we'll change it. I'm going to go ahead and start this up here. And on this top virtual machine, I'm going to fly through the menus here um, just to get this install running. And then I'm going to go back on another virtual machine to show you uh, in more detail what these menus do. OK, so for the duration of this video, you can watch the installation progress in this virtual machine in the top right corner. Um, and then in the bottom right here, I'm going to launch another virtual machine, and I'll explain some of these menus in further details. So I have a deployment server here, which hosts the installation image as well as the additional packages from the Ubuntu repository. And it serves some of these files over TFTP, some of them over Apache. And uh, the first thing that it does here is it assigns an IP address. You can see that we got an IP address in the 172.20.0 range. If I go over to my deployment server, you can see that it's on a couple different networks here. 192.168.4 is my internal production network, and then the 172.20.0 is an isolated network only for the Pixie clients. So if I were to look here at this pretty little graphic, you can see that my production network over here on the left connects to my front-facing router that goes out to the internet, and then my deployment server sits between these two networks, and you have your deployment clients over here. So this dev-01 box is within this dotted line with the deployment clients connected to ETH1 on this IP subnet. So the program I use for managing the Pixie components of this server is called DNS Mask. This program handles DNS, DHCP, and TFTP services. Um, all in one nice formatted config file here. Um, so you can see that I'm only running it on ETH1 because I do not want to hand out IP addresses to my production network that's handled by my internet facing router. So I'm only handing IP addresses to my Pixie clients. And then you can see here further down the file here of where I configure my menu. This menu only has two options. You can boot from the local hard disk or you can boot from the Pixie Linux image, which is what I'm using for OS deployment. So this menu um, kind of looks like um, if you've ever imaged your Android phone or done like cache wipes, you can see that it's one yes surrounded by a bunch of no's. I'm kind of using that same format, so you have to very deliberately press OS deployment. The main reason why I do this is because if you have, uh, if you plug a computer that you don't intend to image into your deployment network and it has Pixie booting enabled, you'll see this message. And if you hit enter now, it'll just boot normally, no harm done. Or if you like hold down the down arrow and then you hit enter it'll still boot from the hard disk. If you're selecting OS deployment it's very likely that it's intentional. Um, it's just another way that I idiot proof the process. And so if you do that it'll load Pixie Linux from this TFTP root folder here. Alright so I'm going to select OS deployment and it's going to leave the Pixie menu and go into the grub boot menu. So let me load that config file now. Okay, so this is the Grub settings, and um, I have a couple different options here. The top one is the very simplified one. It just loads the network installer image and nothing else. The second option was what I selected earlier, which loads the preceed file, um, in addition to some network configuration options. The reason is is because the preceed file is located on the network. It's loaded from the deployment server through HTTP, so it's served up by Apache. In order to do that, I have to include some other settings to configure the network interface. So you can see here where I am configuring 
which network device to use, and then up here some other language settings are also required. Unfortunately, this means that I also have to set the host name here because I have to set the host name um, with the other network settings. You can't put the host name inside of the preceed file. This doesn't mean though that you can't set the host name on the fly. Since this is a Grub menu, I can go down here and just hit tab, and I place the host name conveniently at the end of the uh, parameter list. So I can just backspace this, and if I wanted to set this up as dev-02, I can do that. You can also do the default host name that I have in here and then change the host name after the fact, but I'd rather do it in the beginning. So the next component I'd want to go over is the preceed file. So let me open that next. Okay. So this is a, my preseed file here that I use for most of my installs. Um, you can see here that it is a PHP script. Um, when I originally started creating these files, I would create several different installer profiles, so different scripts, and I realized that I was only changing one or two lines between each file. So I'd have one file that would install a server, one file that would install a desktop, for example. And if I scroll down here, you can see the only difference is this one line. It's the task select option where I'm either selecting desktop or I'm selecting server. And I realized that it is inefficient to have multiple files because if I want to change like the mirror, for example, I'd have to go in every file and change it. And it was pretty inefficient. Being someone that, that's experienced with PHP, I figured, you know, since this is going through Apache, why not just make it a PHP script and I can send get parameters to create more specific precede uh, pre files on the fly. So for example, on this Grub menu list, you can see here that I'm sending this auto part parameter, and you can see I'm specifying the device of a hard disk. And if you come over here, um, you can see that I'm testing for that condition, where if I'm specifying a hard disk, then I'm going to load the auto partitioner for that disk and set up logical volume management, or LVM for that disk. The reason why I have to specify which disk I'm using is because I use this in Hyper-V and other virtualization environments as well. And for KVM guests, it's XDA. For uh, VMware and Hyper-V, it's SDA. And for physical devices, I've done it on physical laptops and computers that have multiple hard drives. And so sometimes I want to use a secondary disk like SDB or SDC or something like that. And so this allows me to do that quite easily. And then if I also didn't want to do a server, I could add, um, you know, I could add that. And it would also install a full desktop. So it would be this condition right here. And if you'd like some more information on how the Pixie server is set up, I have a full article that describes how to configure your own deployment server you require no extra software that's not in the Ubuntu repositories. The main packages, I believe, are uh, DNS Mask, Apache, and PHP, or Python, or if you want to do some other dynamic scripting. But it's pretty basic stuff. Okay, so the installation is complete, and we rebooted right back into that Pixie menu because it's still the first boot order in this virtual machine. So let's change that. I'm going to go ahead and stop it here and go back into the settings. And I'm going to remove the legacy network adapter. And then I'm going to add a network adapter. And while I'm here, let's add a processor core too, because why not? All right, so I'm going to start this machine back up. Um, it shows a floppy disk error. And then after that, you're going to see completely nothing. Um, there's some sort of issue where the graphical terminal doesn't like to display properly in Hyper-V guests. Or at least I find that the case with Ubuntu 12.04. I haven't really tried later versions. Um, oops. Um, the good news is that I can ping the machine. Um, so it's online, so let's SSH into it. So this is a config file that controls the um, the grub settings, and so I'm going to delete a couple things here. I'm going to delete that section there, and then this line here. Uh, we want to keep it the grub terminal in console mode. 
when I uncomment this line, it's not going to try to enable the graphical terminal, which tries to increase the resolution based on what it thinks the graphics adapter and the monitor can support. For some reason, this generates a problem um, with Hyper-V. For some reason, the, the graphic or the Hyper-V console doesn't like to change resolutions. At least not. I don't know what the issue is, but black screen, so we'll fix it. So I edited the file, um, and then we'll also want to update grub. Finally, I'm going to reboot the machine. You'll see it shrink back down to size, and we'll see our lovely boot messages. You'll notice it also loaded Hyper-V modules. Um, you don't need to install any guest additions or um, any additional software like you would have to for VMware VirtualBox. Hyper-V modules are compiled into the kernel. Submitted actually by Microsoft is open source code. All right, and we're done. We have a fully functional uh, basic server. You're now free to install additional packages and uh, customize it to your needs. If you need any more information or would like to learn more about my deployment environment, this works in Hyper-V as well as for physical devices, VirtualBox, VMware, KVM. Um, it's adaptable. It's not specific to any of those technologies. So feel free to leave a comment if you need any more information. Thanks for watching.